If you are new to Pro Tools, then you might think an explanation of the Pro Tools playback engine window settings is gonna sound something like this. Uh, all right, so the compression and expansion of the longitudinal waves cause the erratic oscillation, you can see it there, of the neighboring particles. In this video, I'm gonna give you a clear and easy to understand description of the Pro Tools playback engine window, as well as how to maximize the most out of your DAW in only three minutes. The playback engine's primary function is to tell Pro Tools how to send and receive audio. In my experience helping students troubleshoot playback issues with Pro Tools in their home recording studio setup, the common issue of, I can't hear anything, is often resolved in the playback engine window. To check your playback engine settings, go to Setup, Playback Engine. In the main dropdown, you might have a bunch of different options, but let's look at two common selections. Let's say we want to do some recording and Pro Tools needs a reminder that our audio interface is indeed connected. One important tip here, plug in your interface before you start Pro Tools. This will save you some time and frustration. If it's not already selected, click the playback engine name of the interface you're currently using. Some handy things worth mentioning here. I.O. settings. Pro Tools automatically creates and recalls I.O. settings based on the playback engine you pick. This means that you probably won't have to mess with the I.O. settings if you have a fairly simple recording setup. Drivers. A lot of high-end interfaces require that you download a driver so that your computer can properly communicate with your hardware. The good news is that a lot of modern, simpler interfaces used in home recording studios don't require you to download any drivers or firmware. So hopefully it will just automatically show up here in the dropdown, assuming you did like I mentioned before, and plug in your interface before you get started. Here's a second, even simpler scenario. Say you want to work within Pro Tools, but just listen using your laptop or computer's built-in output. You know, those times when you're mixing on your laptop and you don't want to lug around the interface. In this instance, you would want to make sure that built-in output is selected. You could then listen to your session using your computer's built-in output or plug in some headphones. Okay, let's look at some other options. Buffer size. You might not have to adjust this, but it's important to know one concept. Lower buffer settings are better for recording, while higher buffer settings are better for mixing. If you are experiencing latency when recording, try reducing the buffer size. Alternatively, if later on you are mixing and running a bunch of plugins and Pro Tools gives you an error message like this one, then try increasing the buffer size. To summarize, if your computer is not super powerful, you might need to adjust the buffer size settings sometimes. Use low buffer settings for recording and higher buffer settings for mixing. The default settings on these other options are probably best for you, but let's go over them anyway. Optimize performance at low buffer settings. This is a new feature in Pro Tools 2020. Leave it the way it is. Ignore errors during playback. If your computer starts running slow to the point where Pro Tools would normally crash while you're recording, this feature works kind of like an override and forces it to keep recording, but it can record clicks and pops in your track. Usually, I wouldn't ever check this box, but I will add that if you're just doing some scratch tracks at home and you plan to overdub them later, you can check this box to save some time from having to keep adjusting those buffer size numbers. Dynamic plugin processing. I wouldn't change this unless Pro Tools keeps crashing and you've already tried adjusting the buffer size. Video engine. Are you working with video in Pro Tools? Mm, I'm gonna guess probably not, so we'll leave this unchecked. Cache size. You can probably just leave this as is. According to the Pro Tools user guide, in most cases, the default setting of normal is the optimum cache size for most sessions. All right, that's it. See, you don't have to be a total geek to understand the Pro Tools playback engine settings. Subscribe to our channel to watch more bite-sized instructional videos on Pro Tools and recording. See you next time.